What's going on everyone, Austin John Place here, and today I'm going to be going over all the rare Pokemon of the Crimson Marylands in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Ah, uh, it's a beautiful morning. Me and my character match, we're in red with white on it, looking dapper, looking dapper. I, I need to see if there's there's new clothes. You know what? We'll change clothes for uh for the next region. The Crimson Marylands doesn't have as many Pokemon that are like very rare chances to show up like the Chimchar was in the first area. There's actually just some rare Pokemon in general and the area is big and with all the dips and valleys, it's kind of easy to miss some of these things. I'm gonna be going over the rare Pokemon, Pokemon you need to look out for, and also the rarest Pokemon spawn in the entire game is here. First Pokemon, we are gonna be doing Turtwig, who's gonna be located down here, and there's going to be Turtwig and Grodel. So if you're not familiar about the epic jump that you can make from the west side to the east side, that's where we ride, over here to the Droning Meadow, you can just come over here, hop off, and then we're gonna hit plus because I already have Basculation and I just wanna show that you can make it. And then we're over here, no problem. I've also made it my video on all of the alpha Pokemon, so I definitely recommend comparing and contrasting that. We're gonna make our way to the southernmost point down here, this tiny little pond. This area could be such a pain with all the dips and dives and also you can get a space-time dimension spawn here and it's just, it's just the worst one. Cause like you have all these peaks and valleys, my face is covering part of the screen, but even with that, like, uh, until you get Braviary, this place is a mess to navigate. And then all the way down here, there's going to be two specific Pokemon that spawn. And that spawn table is gonna include Paris, Parasect, Turtwig, and Grodel. Who do we have? We have Turtwig. Now the weird part is, it says that Turtwig is very rare to spawn here, like 13%. I don't think I've ever come here and he wasn't here, all right? For Turtwig, if you catch it without being seen, that's three. You need to feed it four times and catch it once without being seen, or just catch it at that point. So bring some berries, throw some berries over there, let him see it. It may be a good idea in case you have a Paris here to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Get rid of it. I'm so happy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna respect you with a gigaton ball, sir. The most expensive ball I can make right now. There we go, great. We got a Turtwig. And he didn't see us. Yep, neat. Now the Turtwig you just caught is probably just a couple levels away from evolving. It's your option if you want to evolve it and raise a Turtwig to a Grotal. To let you know, I don't know if this is pronounced Grotal or Grotal. But just evolving it, you don't really get a lot of points. It's more about raising it and feeding it food five times can kind of help. I'm just gonna go catch one because we're doing a living dex anyways. And you know me, I like to show that it can be done. Grotal or Grotal? Grotal. Let's go with Grotal. Grotal spawns at about 5%. So for one to one odds, you may need to zone over here 10 times and clear out both the Parasect and the Turtwig. I should also mention that doing this during the day does produce slightly higher results as the nighttime table is shared with Spooky Boys? Yeah, Haunter and Ghastly. Oh ho ho! All right, wasn't expecting that. But as you can see, we have a Grotal. What's the chance of an Alpha Grotal? 0.53% chance, about one in 200 chance for an Alpha Grotal. I'm excited because now I have another Pokemon from my Alpha Living Dex. Oh, and there's a Turtwig. It's like a baby and the adult. I'm dropped down to save here. I don't want to mess this up. I think I need to feed this thing five times. Once again, I want to remind everyone the only way to get random Alphas to spawn is to help quell the local Frenzy Noble of the area. Turtwig does not need to be fed. And he's just going to get in the way because I think he's faster. Grodel, you want some more food? Not you, Turtwig. You already ate yours. Grodel, are you having trouble pathfinding to that food? Body block the Turtwig. I just want you to turn around and then I'm going to gigaton you from the back. Yes. Yes. Please. Thank you, sir. Oh, wait, we need to we need to encounter it for the for the thumbnail, don't we? He was in the grass. Yeah, that's thumbnail worthy. Wow, what a way to start the video, right? <sighs> nice. 
I want to mention that while adventuring through this area, the shaking trees have a chance to have Burmy. However, these Burmies can be the sand Burmies. I don't know if only some of them or, oh, I guess all of them. All of them can be the sand Burmy. And you need to have one of each, the grass, sand, and trash Burmies for a future quest. So when you see this Burmy and you're like, well, I'm already level 10 on Burmy, make sure to catch this Burmy as well. You wanna get all three of them. From your epic jump over on the west side of the map, if you head south toward the Droning Meadow and you keep your eye on the river, there's a chance you could find Barboach there as well. There's a Barboach. And a very slim chance to find Whishcash. Now, oh, there he is. There's Whishcash. But every time you come across this Whishcash, make sure you bring a Grass move with you. Because if you defeat it with a Grass move, that's three points every time. Doing it twice, that's six points, and then you catch two of them, that's that's your perfect 10. That's all you really need. For the bar boaches, give it food. You feed it 10, you feed it seven times, catch it once, that's dex completion. Nice and easy. Next up on the docket is gonna be Toga Kiss and Toga P. Alright, so both of them are located right here at the Cotton Edge Prairie, right? Toga Kiss is going to always 100 percent be flying around in the sky, as you can see right ahead of you. I'm pretty sure you almost pretty much need a feather ball in order to do toga kiss. By the way, you're gonna see a wisp here. I am gonna be doing a full wisp guide. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing the wisp guide for this area after this video because I don't think you need Basque Legion for it, but for the first area, you do need Basque Legion. So your takeaway from this whole little rant here is after this video and that subsequent video, you may want to go get Basque Legion to, if you're following along. Actually, a bunch of people have told me that they're just kind of following along with how I'm progressing through these videos, which pretty cool that way. I mean, I definitely like filling up the decks one area at a time. It's just gonna make a figure eight and you just need to wait until it goes into your crosshairs, just like the Toga Tick was in the first area. And boop, way off, boop. That was a weird little stutter it did there. Tertiary boop, nice. Always prepare your second ball and it broke out. That's why you always prepare that second ball. Nice. Now you could get Toga Tick very easily, just like that. And if you catch three of them in the air, that's a done page. 100%, you're done, good to go, right? Toga P has a supposedly 25% chance to spawn down here. It's only gonna be spawning in the three places that you're gonna be seeing Pachirisu. You wanna sleep until morning. If it's raining, you wanna sleep again. And then we're gonna run up here and we're gonna do our epic jump over to the west side if you don't have Basque Legion. Upon coming back to the area, feel free to catch yourself another toga piss. <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> Feel free to catch yourself another Toga Kiss. I'm gonna make my way down here and we're gonna see if we have Toga P show up. And there's something weird going on here that it's not spawning correctly for me. I don't know what's going on with these spawns, man. This is the first ever Pokemon that just hasn't spawned regularly for me. Man, I don't know what's going on. I'm not gonna lie, I've actually done this nine times. I'm just gonna start zoning in and out. And of course by rezone, I mean I'm gonna go back to the village and then back to the map. Nope, three Pachirisus. Okay, let's rezone again. This is try number three from rezoning. Togepi, great, I'm saving the game here. Oh, this was such a mess. Togepi, if you give it food four times and catch it once, that's Pokedex completion. However, it has a very long range. So I'm gonna recommend coming over here to the flowers. While in the flowers, do do just the longest throw you could possibly do. That isn't a very long throw. And also these Pachirisus seem to be faster than Togepi. Don't hit it. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank almighty Sinnoh it didn't hit it. If it gets too suspicious, it might just attack you and then flee. So let's just make it happy again with food. After you have fed Togepi the maximum amount of times, make sure it is busy eating if you want to go and try to take it out to a nice dinner. You want to dodge that. You want to get away from him in case he breaks out. And he did break out. Are you going to flee? Please don't flee. It's so bright out, it's hard to see if it's still here. Okay, it's still here. That's good. I'm just going to use ZR locking right now. 
and ZL locking. Because, I don't know why, but it's so bright out. These flowers are so blown out. Great, we got it. Oh, that took actually 25 minutes. That's the reason you want to save beforehand. Feed it food. Pokedex entry complete. Feed it four times. Catch it once, you're good. That's only my second one I've ever caught. The next Pokemon we're going to be going after is Pseudo Wudo and Bonsley. Fly to the Diamond Settlement. We're gonna be going to the marker on my map. That's this little flag right about there. The spawn table that we're going to be coming up on only contains Pseudo Wudo and Bonsley. And there's only two spaces. So you can find two Pseudo Wudos, two Bonsleys, or a combination. The Pseudo Wudo is about 81%. We could already see that we have two Pseudo Wudos here. And then the Bonsley is 16%. If it's foggy, Bonsley's chance is a little bit higher and Pseudo Wudo's is a little bit lower and during the nighttime they share it with ghosts. So it's your option now if you just want to walk up to the Pseudo Wudo, they do not resist you at all. Great time to burn off those old heavy balls that you have lying around if you're already on better balls. Doesn't aggro, just go to his back, hit him in the back, clear out both of them, get back on your pony, return back to camp, sleep again till morning, and we're gonna go re-encounter them. Oh, that's an alpha combi. All right, it looks like I have one pseudo wudo, and did the second one not spawn, or is there a Bonsley hiding in that grass? Bonsley is very short compared to pseudo wudo. And no, I don't think there's a Bonsley anywhere. All right, let's just go back to camp and do the whole thing again. It only took two sleeps and I was able to get Bonsley to show up. You see him over there off in the distance, right? Bonsley, luckily we could feed it food five times and catching it, that gives us seven points. Catching it without being spotted, that's eight points. Catching a second one will perfect the page. You're also gonna see number you've seen leap out of ore deposits. That's going to be when Bonsley is able to be in ore deposits in the Mount Cornet region. I forgot the name of it because I haven't progressed that far in this save. But you can finish this later and it's just gonna be in ore deposits that are shaking. Although, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of avoid those in the end game. Oh, there's some grass over here. That dude is very astute for being a baby. Okay, yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll eat a berry, cool. I think everything eats berries, especially these orange berries, unless they're an alpha and they have trouble with their pathing. Does the check mark mean I can't do that anymore? It does mean I can't do that anymore. Can we just catch you in a heavy ball, like we did for your peepaw? Yeet, really? <laughs> Dramatic last ditch attempt. Okay, great. I needed him for the thumbnail, didn't I? Is that a sleeping pseudo wudo? Dude, if you're gonna be a tree, you can't be laying down sleeping like that. I mean, I guess he could be like a fallen log or something. I've just never seen a pseudo wudo sleep. Where's his back? Is this his back? Sure is. All right, now we are coming up on not really a rare Pokemon, but one that you should definitely grab and you know, maybe maybe grab a few of, especially if you're like me and you're trying to complete the decks as you go through. You have Alpha Licky Licky chilling up here right next to the top of the ruins. And right here, you're gonna be finding four Ralts. And between these Ralts, there's a slim chance that one of them's gonna be a Curlia, about 22% chance. In addition to down here, you can have up to three Pokemon spawn. And again, I think 22% chance that it's going to be a Curlia. During the nighttime, it becomes a little bit more rare because you also get some ghost Pokemon spawning here. I'm, I'm not even I'm not even going to be going over this because I'm I'm about to get into something real spicy and I've seen Curlia way too many times. Uh, before we get into the spiciest stuff, are we done with everything? Honorable mention here in the space time rifts that pop up, there is a chance that you're going to be finding Porygon. Porygon 2 and a chance at Porygon Z. But my first ever spawn of the three rare spawns, I'm sure you saw my whole guide on time space distortions. And if you didn't, it's probably right there. If I remember to put the card in, keep in mind in the post game, you're also gonna be finding the Cyndaquil line. So there's that too. Time to get into the rarest Pokemon in the entire game. So of all of the Pokemon, evolution families. I think every single one of them has at least 2% between all the different forms, all the different areas, except for one Pokemon. And I did this for five hours. I knew I, could, I knew I couldn't do it this morning. I knew it was gonna be rare, and I knew it was gonna be very difficult for me to actually do. Between last night and today, 
for five hours I tested this. After you get every single wisp with the old keystone, you get a spirit tomb encounter. And the spirit tomb encounter is a staged encounter. You just turn around, he's chilling there. Future Austin, show that footage now. However, you can encounter a less than 1% chance to find Spirit Tomb again. You see right here, number caught, one. And this is a wild Spirit Tomb. Took me five hours to get this thing to show up. It only can be one of the Pokemon directly here in front of this old Keystone. There's Ralts, Curlia, Ghastly, and Haunter, as well as all of their Alpha variants. While doing this for five hours, I do want to mention I found three full odd shinies. One of them being that Murkrow, and this Haunter over here at the top left. Also, when I was getting all of the Wisps, I was able to find this Drifloom over here at the bottom left. There is a 0.87% chance that Spirit Tomb is going to be showing up. I believe that's about 1 out of 115. About 1 in 250 chance that you're going to be finding an Alpha Spirit Tomb. But ready? That's not the rarest Alpha in the game. <laughs> After you complete all of the unknowns, which by the way, before you have Basculegia, before you go to the final areas, you can't do these things. I'm just mentioning this for future proofing. And just because these numbers are insane. After you find all of the unknowns, after you catch all 28 of the unknowns throughout the entire world, you can make your way back to the Salacion Ruins. You know, the part of the story with the thing on the wall. And inside of the Salacion Ruins, you're going to be finding all 28 characters of unknown. All of the characters have the exact same chance to spawn, and they are the entire pool here. I've seen between four and six spawn every single time I've come here. They're not gonna aggro you or anything else. You can get in here, you can find the exact letter that you want. Every single letter of unknown has a 0.04% chance to be an alpha. That means if you're hunting for, say for example, an alpha unknown of the letter A for Austin, there is a one in 2,500 chance that one of these is going to be your specific letter of alpha. Granted, if you combine all the letters together and compound that number, then yes, you are going to have a much higher chance at finding an unknown alpha. And last night, I found one of the unknowns in an alpha. Unfortunately, I don't have the beginning of the clip of it just being there. It does look very ominous. I will tell you that. And it's the only one that will aggro you and it will do the whole exclamation mark knock you down thing. And he is right here. So that's the size comparison between the big ones and the little ones. It's actually not that different. It's also weird seeing them, you know, just, just hanging out next to each other. What do I have? Is this Q? I think I have Q. Yeah. One in 2,500 chance to find this one Pokemon, which I'm pretty sure, mathematically, is the rarest alpha in the entire game. Non-shiny. Now that I've explained it thoroughly and told you exactly how to do it, it's not clickbait, but I definitely need a picture of me fighting an unknown for the thumbnail. Which one are we gonna do? L. I like L, let's go for L. There we go, that's a nice thumbnail. Well, there you go, guys. That is all of the rare Pokemon of the Crimson Mirelands. Next video, we're going to be starting to knock out these Will-O-Wisps. I am saving the unknowns until after I unlock the last area. And after I do the Will-O-Wisps of this area, we are knocking out the Will-O-Wisps of the next area because we're going to get Basque Legion and we're going to take it from there. Great. Well, guys, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe as we're very close to hitting our goal of 2 million subscribers by the end of February. And thank you so much for being here. Until next time, Austin John out.